recording, but you know, we'll cut from oh, the moment to start. Okay. I see you around.
Porque por repartimos un poco. Creo que sí que he pedido No, porque si voy a ir también, ya no. Pero yo no sé. Hi everyone, welcome to this first session of diversity today. Um, we've got three talks for this session. Um, throughout the session, we want to encourage free flow, so feel free to come in and out as you want. Uh, we're using on Twitter, we're using the hashtag Wikimania2014, so feel free to use that. Um, if you want to keep track of any session changes or for easy access download, you can download the Eva Eva Bright app. Um, so now I'm going to introduce Neta Neta Hussein, who's going to do a talk on zero code strategies for Wikimedia outreach. Very quick about 
about evaluation, not be very quick about pushing the project forward, so we could do it on any timeline of our choice, which really made me comfortable to do zero cost units. Again, uh, it's very easy to make course corrections. So in between, if we feel that like we are bored doing it, we could just stop it. Or if we feel that it's good, it's not going the right way around, we could make a course correction. So um, doing it on zero cost really helped us to uh, make course corrections whenever and wherever you want it. And finally, so while we were doing it, uh, we found a research uh, from the program evaluation and design team of the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, which said that uh, the budget size of an outreach event doesn't have uh, any relationship to the outcome of the event. So it's like if you put in a ten dollars or a thousand dollars or a five thousand dollars, it's not having, it's not going to have much relationship with the outcome. <coughs> So we were thinking that yes, so even a zero cost event could have, could probably have similar uh, outcomes as that of a budget event, uh, which made us all, which made us think that conducting zero cost events is all the more important. Uh, so in the coming few slides, I'll run you through uh, some of uh, the zero cost projects we implemented in India. Um, and uh, I have like listed like five of them, uh, which I think are important to be shared. Uh, so the first one and the favorite one for us uh, is the online editions, which we uh, conducted uh, during uh, July and uh, March. The one we conducted in March was uh, about uh, the Women's History Month, where uh, we write articles related to articles which are primarily of importance to women uh, throughout the month. Uh, then we also did Wikipedia workshops. Uh, so it's like uh, there are many educational institutes in India which are keen to conduct Wikipedia workshops there and they will provide us free space and free Wi-Fi and free food and everything. So it's just that we wanted to go there and conduct the workshops for them. Uh, so we did that in zero cost. Uh, then uh, we did uh, this uh, project for the feature Wikimedia of the month where we used to feature one Wikimedian every month, one, Wikimedia, one very active Wikimedian every month on the Wikimedia India chapter of Wiki, um, uh, which gave them a lot of fame and um, a lot of encouragement, uh, which indirectly helped to boost their ID count and uh, their level of engagement in the Wikimedia community. Uh, then we used to give Wikimedia talks at schools and mostly in educational institutes and also in public spaces. Uh, a Wikimedia talk would typically last like one or two hours for like a couple of volunteers go and uh, do a presentation in a session like this where we inspire them to read uh, Wikipedia and introduce them uh, to Wikipedia and system projects. And sometimes uh, we like narrow it down to Wikipedia and uh, don't actually speak about everything because it's, it's nearly impossible to talk about everything in just two hours or one hour or so. Uh, so the talks were like very zero cost because uh, we used to get an event for free and we would, uh, we as volunteers would plan for an event and we would go to the uh, venue and give a deliver a presentation or give a talk. And we also used to conduct uh, blogging parties in association with all other zero cost projects where we have like a group of bloggers, a group of social media people who uh, update about the progress of the event, who also document the event a lot. And also, uh, we uh, through the blogs, we give announcements regarding the new event. And all these blogs get replicated and reshared everywhere because it's under the CC by SA license. So it really gets disseminated wide and far, and it gave us a lot of coverage. So in the coming slides, I will quickly rush you through all these events and the outcomes from them. So in between, like you are like very free to ask questions, very free to talk, very free to give feedbacks. Also, I would definitely like to hear about the zero cost projects you implemented in your locality so that like, I could learn a lot more. Yes, the online editors. And this has been the most evaluated um, zero cost project uh, so far done in India. So I think uh, I can give uh, a few learnings based on the measurements and, uh, and the quantitative analysis. Uh, so the online form, uh, the prototype event which I'm going to mention in this session uh, is the Women's History Month Edithon which we did uh, during March of 2014. Uh, so it was an Edithon which ran um, during a month, for a, for a whole month. So in between we conducted themed Edithons where we focused on particular themes. The themes we focused this year were women parliamentarians in India and women scientists in India because we identified that there are too few articles regarding women parliamentarians and women scientists in India. 
on English Wikipedia and also in other Indian language Wikipedias. So we rank these online electrons in Indian languages as well as in English. Uh, so it, it, it's like you could sit at your home and write about any Indian woman of your choice, any women uh, uh, and anything that is like of importance to Indian women on Wikipedia and you could uh, uh, put the results on the result outcome section of the event page. Um, and also uh, people were like free to conduct any, any number of offline events uh, uh, of their choice uh, for, for women and also for the general public to write articles, to encourage people to write articles about Indian women. Um, so yes, uh, from the event we have got like a few learnings. So I could te tell you about what worked and what did not work. Um, so what worked was, uh, yeah, the theme editons because uh, if we are like conducting an event for like say a month or so, people are not going to have the sustained motivation to continue and keep editing. So um, so in between we have to like give people a little nudge and a little push to make them like. Uh, contribute and to inspire them to uh, uh, keep on and continue editing. Uh, so we would uh, have the theme, the small theme editons in between uh, during the weekends. So weekends are when people are like a, a little free. Uh, and uh, so we uh, devoted a particular theme for a weekend and uh, we had everybody go together, have fun on the ideas and write articles about that particular theme. And also there were um, there were the pages, uh, the event page also listed uh, the names of uh, articles which they could possibly create. So that it's easy for them to pick them up, uh, pick them up, pick uh, those uh, names from the list and also create an article on uh, those pages. Um, then media coverage really worked. We were actually uh, very concerned about this because uh, it's an online event and there is nothing uh, very uh, fancy going on. It's like people are like at several different locations, they are sitting at their host and editing and it doesn't make much of the media uh, news. Uh, but uh, our blogging team and social media team really did very well and we had a really good coverage of the media. Mostly because of the online outreach of the event. So uh, the offline penetration, I would say that okay, it was low, but uh, we, because of the online outreach, uh, we did get a lot of questions from the media and that created a lot of awareness uh, about this event. And especially in a country like India where uh, the internet penetration is very low, there are too few people who are aware that Wikipedia exists. There are too few people who are aware that Wikipedia exists in their own Indian language, and too few people know that Wikipedia can be edited. So this media coverage is really important uh, because uh, it, all these news comes in the newspapers and people really understand that Wikipedia is an editable space, Wikipedia is somewhere they can come into and contribute. That helped us uh, to create a sense of mass awareness. Um, yes, we, if this event has been engaging existing participants and recruiting new participants as I will demonstrate in the analysis which is coming in the next few slides. Um, so um, we had certain uh, editors who were not active uh, for like six months or so and uh, we had them, um, <coughs> we got them engaged uh, because of the editor. It's like we sent them a friendly email or a friendly template saying that hey we are conducting uh, the Wiki Women's Editor and we would like to join and uh, so if they would be very interested to join once they find that their friends are all around them we could keep uh, the engagement level of the existing editors uh, because of the event. But it, uh, it, uh, the event also helps us in recruiting new participants, but we are not really sure if the recruited participants are uh, really motivated to continue to edit because it has been only like four months since we have done this and uh, we are, I do not have the technical expertise to do the analysis uh, to find out the level of engagement. Probably I will be able to tell you in a year or so uh, after uh, using a survey tools. Uh, but for engaging existing participants, we think that it's really good. Uh, we also got a lot of institutional support uh, from both from the government, both from the Indian uh, and state governments, and also from uh, non governmental organizations in conducting uh, editors. They would sometimes uh, provide support in terms of resources, sometimes they would provide support in terms of uh, uh, venue uh, and some education institutes actually really came up and told that they would like uh, to have uh, their students or uh, their staff members have a editing day. And what it would work was the editing workshops we tried to conduct on IOC. So I was very optimistic. I was uh, very uh, thinking that I would get a few of my friends uh, go on IRC and I would like to help them to try and edit and so on. But it happened that um, only like 
Uh, three or four people, uh, out of the ten people, I was expecting only three or four people turned up all together and in between they had uh, connectivity issues and nothing worked out well. And also, uh, it's really very hard to explain stuff, uh, explain anything on text. Uh, probably it's a good idea to just send them the help pages instead of like giving them support, text chats and support over IRC. I think Hangouts would be a good idea or probably a direct video uh, conversation would be a good idea. But I tried uh, to do that on the IRC and people were like very confused. We had a we had sort of communication barriers. So the editing workshop which I tried to do on the IRC, which I thought was an innovative idea, did not work. We are, uh, uh, so th uh, the another purpose of uh, doing this online edition was to unite all the Indian language communities, all the, there are like sort of uh, 32 Indian language Wikipedia, so I wanted uh, the same event to happen everywhere, but we couldn't find volunteers in many of those Wikipedias. So uh, it, it was only four, uh, four Indian language Wikipedia that turned up to us and said, yeah, we, we, would, we would conduct the edit form. So, uh, so um, and there is also, uh, though we are like uh, one single country and one big moment, uh, we are like divided in terms of languages, like we have very different Wikipedias and people uh, um, people who are active in one language do not read the other language and we do have sort of communication barriers. So my idea was to integrate everyone through uh, through the same song, but it did not really work out because we couldn't get enough volunteers in all the projects to move this forward. So I think uh, I think I wouldn't uh, try to experiment on an idea see this one again, but I will definitely try on like uniting uh, more people and getting more volunteers uh, along. And the numbers, yes. Uh, so we had like four languages. Um, yeah, actually five languages, but um, uh, in one language we has we have like two little contribution, and I don't know how to evaluate it, so I just keep that. Uh, and we have 67 participants who signed up, and there were people who did not sign up but also wanted to go to the event. And we had two, 251 new articles, and I don't really have a count of uh, the articles which we expanded as a part of the uniform. And there were eight online workshops uh, we conducted. After the event, uh, we found that, um, yeah, so we um, looked up, we took the list of signed up participants, uh, we created uh, the list of edits, uh, we uh, created a list uh, showing the number of edits which each part participant made during, during the event and also we compared it with their monthly average edits. So we found that um, uh, the median number of edits um, after the event, I mean the median number of edits is 11 edits per person more during the event than compared to their monthly average, which I think is good news. Uh, it's the median because we have like really fluctuating uh, sort of um, graph. Uh, we have like the highest edits was like sort of 300, 350 and so on, and the lowest was zero. So uh, the median was around 11 edits. So I think um, it's, uh, I do not have uh, the previous metrics to compare to, so I don't really know if 11 is good or bad, uh, but probably we could also measure the events next year and tell you whether we have been improving or going down. Also, we found that 18.5% um, uh, eight, of all edits uh, made by the participants during uh, the Women's History Month fell into the category of the event. Like we created a new category uh, called um, Articles Created or Expanded uh, During the Women's History Month. So when we like compare it with uh, their whole edits during March and also the edits which uh, happened within the category, we found that 80.25% of Edits happen because of the edit And the highest number of edits by a participant by any participant in any language was 345, and we had seven signed up participants who did not edit at all. Uh, so I think this is a failure from our part because we motivated them enough to sign up, but we couldn't engage um, them further. So I think the next year we should be like uh, looking up uh, so the event lasts for a month. So it's like next year I'm planning to like um, uh, do all the analysis at least by third week and figure out uh, who is having zero edits and maybe like encourage them again and to continue to sustain the contribution. And some other ideas turned up uh, among the volunteers which we thought we could implement uh, next year and which, which we could continue next year was that a label uh, Actually, after the event uh, in Ma after the event concluded in March, we conducted a label in April where we labeled um, uh, all the new articles we created on Wikidata. So uh, it's not just enough that we have all the articles on Wikipedia, we 
record. We will also have them labeled in many different languages on Wikidata. So uh, most of all the samples were labeled on Wikidata after the event. Uh, by the same volunteers who also conducted uh, the human system on Wikidata. Uh, we also created a stat board. Uh, a stat board uh, uh, was hosted on the website. Uh, so the board had um, yeah, uh, the list of all the articles created during the event, the number of ed total number of edits that happened during the event, number of editors who signed up, uh, and all these were like listed in order. Um, so uh, this one gave us a quick view of what's actually going on. So we could just log into that page and figure out, uh, what, uh, I mean, the current status, because uh, it keeps updating itself. Uh, I could probably show you uh, the website um, at the end of the presentation. Um, then we also experimented in conducting a wiki party. Uh, actually, uh, the wiki party was uh, sort of um, uh, a party when we were like, we all met up together and we had fun. Uh, then we are also, um, the, uh, some of the articles which we wrote in Indian languages were translated articles. So uh, we were really thinking if we could conduct a translated form next year where we devote uh, all our entire life to the translated form. And again, uh, some people, uh, we, we do uh, write a lot of biographies about uh, women, but after the event, people are not motivated to uh, improve those articles. So uh, probably we could ask people to adopt a particular biography and work on it for the year. And uh, during the Wikipedia workshops, I would like to tell, uh, tell you how uh, we did things on zero cost. So to spread the word, we use social media, it's on zero cost. And even on the event page, we uh, put up all the things, um, which was very robust. And the facilitators were volunteers ourselves. And we used to gather in a public place or an office space, which was given for us for free. And the best time we thought we think were evenings because people would be back from work and uh, we wouldn't have to provide them like uh, lunch or dinner, which is going to be expensive. So we, we would meet over coffee. Uh, and we used to motivate them by giving masters. We wouldn't even inspire us or anything, which would uh, cost us money. And the resources for editing were sent as email or PDF, it's again zero cost. And all help was given on Wiki or we would also give email support uh, necessary for that. We would give our email address to everyone who would be able to, um, so that we could follow them up. And we also had um, the feature Wikimedian of the one session where we used to like, feature every Wikimedian uh, every month. So what we did was we created 12 profiles and uh, we were like very keen on uh, having diversity. We, uh, we were sure that we, we had represented represent all genders, all languages, and like very a variety of ages. And we also had an option to include editors who are not willing to reveal their identity. We actually had one editor who did not want to reveal his identity, uh, but uh, they wanted to um, have their profile being featured. So we made arrangements that way. Uh, and also, uh, we used to spread the word about the feature we created on the mailing list and social media, which made them like really very motivated to do. And what we are able to do is like uh, we do not have a criteria for selecting a feature we created. It's like I used to get uh, nominations from other members, and I used to act on the nominations and make them featured. So we do not have yet uh, defined a criteria. And it's also we do lack clarity about who is an Indian Wikimedian. Like, uh, it's, uh, an Indian Wikipedian is not just a member of certain chapter. An Indian Wikipedian is not just a resident of India, or maybe an overseas resident. An Indian Wikipedian is not just a person who's writing in an Indian language. So we have to have a broader perspective on this. And also, we uh, do not really know what will happen if we have like lots of applications for uh, the feature Wikimedian of them on how to uh, credit their contributions and how to list them in the order. We used to conduct Wikipedia talks uh, in FES and educational institutes, and we, it's like we conduct a couple of talks about Wikimedia projects uh, by the volunteers, and we, that aims at like introducing Wikimedia and inspiring people to contribute. It gives us like a sort of mass awareness. People really understand what is Wikipedia, and people understand that Wikipedia is an editable space, which is very important in, in the Indian context, and it requires less volunteer time. It's like a two-hour session, so you don't need much of a and again, we couldn't be providing any hands-on experience because it's just a talk like this, so um, a hands-on experience was out of question. Um, yeah, and we do a lot of blogging, and what we learned was that uh, we should keep stick to a very simple language, which is suitable for like everyone, for all reading ages, and also non native speakers, because we are mostly blogging about stuff happening in India, so um, not everybody is a native speaker of English, so we, we have to stick on very, um, very simple language. Again, it should be short. Uh, it should be probably illustrated with a lot of pictures and maybe flowcharts. 
and definitely terrible. <coughs> and uh, all these uh, blogs could uh, would be it would be ideal to have all these blogs reviewed by non Wikimedians because as Wikimedians we are likely to use a lot of uh, wiki jargon, uh, which might be which might not make any sense to who is someone who is a non Wikimedian. So I I always used to have non Wikimedians review them. Uh, and we also use multiple publishing platforms to publish uh, all these blogs because uh, they are being shared under the CC by SA license, so they could be like this in here and anywhere. I, uh, there are some people who have accounts in um, newspaper blogs who also blog there. And also it's very important to have translations to many Indian languages because all these learnings and all these uh, projects come from uh, Indian languages, so uh, we always use to have translations uh, if that's possible. Mm, I think uh, we are short of time, so probably I'll uh, skip the rest of the things. Uh, so I, I would definitely like to take questions right now, yes. Anyone, any questions? <coughs> yes, thank you. Um, approximately how many people do you need to run these sort of uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. No worries. Um, approximately how many people did you take to run the particular editathon that you were talking about? Um, uh, the team, yeah. So uh, we have a team of like say nine people, out of which uh, two gave their employee time, um, yes, for conducting the offline work of workshops in particular, uh, and the rest of us were like yes, seven people, yes, uh, and one was in charge of the blogging and the social media team, and I was like coordinating every language and getting people done, and two of us were looking at the evaluation side of things. Um, and we had uh, one Wikimedian who was actually uh, talking with the institutes and uh, getting things together uh, and talking with the institutes and you know, getting the workshops uh, done. Yeah, and it's like we were together, uh, we, we used to have um, uh, an email discussion, we were all on the same thread and we would like update everybody about uh, what's happening and so on. It's important. To, I think it's very important to have the coordination because uh, because we all are sitting in uh, different parts of the country, and um, it's it's really very hard to. Um, I, I, we we never have had uh, a, a, any in-person meetup, so everything was done online. Uh, that made it zero cost further. Like we didn't have to travel at all. Yeah. yeah. Are we working on it for quite a while of pre-events, or is it mainly the week of the event? Do you have a lot of build-up to the event? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. I, I heard your question, but I don't make out the word. Um, oh, sorry, I was just asking if uh, you had a lot of build-up to the event. Um, was it like a matter of days, or weeks, or months? Uh, the Women's History Month uh, editorium was ha happened during a month, yeah, throughout the month. Actually, more than a month, because we had a few enthusiastic people who started uh, picking up articles from the list of to-do articles and creating uh, articles during the month of February, even before the event started. But it was like perfectly okay for us. We are not um, like uh, asking them to be uh, confined within a particular time space. So people were like free to write articles at any time. Uh, but during the month of March, we gave more focus. We gave it more trust. We celebrated it, and that's how probably we got more people to do articles related to that. Yes. Um, well, how much planning time would you estimate that group of nine organizers put into planning? Uh, um, I think it's difficult to estimate because most of the conversations was, were online. All of the conversations were online, so uh, we didn't have any meetups, uh, in-person meetups where we could actually measure the number of hours. But I think that email thread ran up to um, millions, I mean, sort of more than a hundred uh, mails uh, in between us. So I think if the number of mails could be able to give you an idea about how much work we did, probably that's it. Uh, I can't really say how much of time we didn't plan. And also we had to make a little course corrections. So in between, uh, we thought of, um, when, uh, we, uh, the, uh, the idea of doing the wiki data level account was not in mind. So at the end of the event, we still had some energy left and we thought why not add the levels as well. So in between, we had to make some corrections. We had to change the course of the events. Uh, and the theme that the thoughts were also not planned in the beginning. So uh, so it was during the course of the event that we thought actually we would have some weekend events and that's how uh, we planned it. We have one more event. I can take probably two more questions. Yes? I don't think uh, only four languages from 
Uh, it's mostly because I didn't reach out to them well because uh, it's like we are a very dispersed community and I don't personally know people from all these communities. So uh, it's like though we were a group of nine, uh, not everybody was a Wikipedian to start with. So only those Wikipedians who were in the group and who were in touch with other languages would be able to bring more participants into it. So unless we reach out to them personally, I, I don't think people will be able to join us. But we posted the message regarding uh, the editathons on all the uh, Indian language Wikipedias. Uh, and it's like only one Wikipedia responded back uh, to us. And uh, the rest of the um, volunteers were gathered using my personal contacts in other language Wikipedias. And secondly, um, we had like some of the Wikipedias are sort of uh, having um, too few volunteers. So the active volunteers have to take care of uh, the administrative stuff and also write articles do everything at the same time. So we did not have volunteers who were free enough to take the additional responsibility of uh, doing uh, another release form. So that would probably be the reason why we really had too many participation. Uh, yes. I think we are out of time. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for coming. So the next session, uh, which is going to happen here, is about social media uh, and uh, how social media helps to spread the word of Wikimedia. I'm also a panelist and we have the other panelists coming around, so if you want to stay along, I would definitely be happy to share, uh, to learn your perspectives and also to tell my perspectives to you. Thank you very much. Um, so what, what account do you run? What's the goal of it? 
And then give us a sense of like about how many followers you have. Do you want to start, Yvonne? Thank you, Zico, and thank you for the invitation. It's very interesting for, for me and uh, the managing of social media conversation. Do it, it's a, a new environment for the communication of the goals and the pre knowledge, which is very important uh, for us to manage these kind of conversations. Uh, so, I am the admin for uh, a few uh, social media accounts related to my chapter and my organization, my community. And I'm the admin of Wikilos Monuments Mexico, uh, the admin of uh, Wikimedia Mexico uh, channels in Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. And uh, I'm the co admin with other guys from Costa Rica and Chile of Wiki Noticias. It's the Spanish Wiki News account, with the more successful account, uh, one of the most followed uh, social media accounts in the Wikimedia movement. I think it's the, 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 after the Wikipedia, the Wikimedia accounts, it's the most followed of the social media channels in the Wikimedia movement. We have 1,900 followers, uh, plus, uh, yeah, and uh, we manage the account into three persons in the different, uh, different places in the American continent. And uh, yes, we are reflecting uh, the spirit of the movement of the free news uh, uh, goal of the project into this account. Okay. Uh, I'm Hussein. Uh, so I am a content creator for the Wiki Women's Collaborator uh, social media page. Uh, where we use, uh, yeah, we have 998 likes for the, as of now, uh, and it has been 14 months we started this project uh, to promote like uh, women. Uh, to write on Wikipedia and also to uh, increase the content uh, related to women uh, on Wikipedia and our sister projects. So um, as a content creator, uh, my responsibility is to find out news and interesting things, interesting things from Wikipedia and Wikipedia sister projects uh, which are of importance to women and put them there. And we also celebrate the stories of uh, women Wikimedians who have done a really good job. Um, also, sometimes we do also discuss issues concerning women on Wikimedia and we also give event alerts regarding uh, editathons or uh, value workshops which are like focusing on women's issues. Um, again, uh, sometimes we also give alerts about Wikipedia articles related to women which needs improvement, which are a top priority articles, article but which still needs improvement. Uh, so all this content uh, will be created and it's like I'm working with uh, three other Wikimedians in this process uh, so I'm very happy to be in the back and figure out what uh, other people also have to say about this. Thanks, guys. Hey, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm Hi, my name is Alice. Uh, I have a project on the Chinese social media, which uh, the website called Weibo literally means map or blog and it's like a Chinese Twitter since there's no access for in China to visiting Twitter and you know, following up all the official Wikipedia account. So our account name is just like Wikipedia, and we now have uh, uh, 16,000 followers on the Chinese social media. Uh, the main purpose to have this account is to increase the awareness of the Wikipedia in China since lots of people doesn't know that what is Wikipedia or some, someone like, confused with Wikipedia and Wikileaks. <laughs> well, yeah, no, most time I talking to people like I'm from Wikipedia, they say thing, mm, do you know Julia? <laughs> uh, and, and also uh, there is a several com there are several computers, you know, online encyclopedia like Baidu. Uh, they are huge and have lots of editors, articles. It, it's kind of like uh, they have different ideas with us and uh, we're trying to use the social media to spread our ideas of Wikimedia movement and Wikipedia. Mm, the most thing we post is the fun things about Wikipedia, you know, like the monkey selfies. <laughs> and uh, some interesting articles on the Wikipedia. 
and also we spread the, uh, the, the community news, the uh, international community things, so that have well, well let people from China have access to the. You know, there is some information from Twitter that we can just directly copy, translate it, and uh, share it to all Chinese people. So just, I'm Jake Orlowitz, I'm user of Kasi, and the Wikipedia Library is a project to help connect editors and readers with um, reference experts, publishers, and libraries. So I run um, two pages related to the, the library. One is on Facebook, it's the Wikipedia Library, and the other is the Twitter account, at Wikipedia Library. And um, for scale, Facebook has about 2,000 likes and Twitter has about 1,000 followers. And uh, I use the account, it's just me running it. I use it to promote uh, encouraging people to, to edit to, and show tools about how to edit Wikipedia. Uh, we talk about new programs and open positions and sign-ups that are available, uh, particularly to editors uh, or through universities. We reach out to our publishing partners. We get donations from publishers, so we'll uh, thank them and talk about the, the offerings from publishers and try and uh, reach out to them and, and share our appreciation. Um, we, we retweet a lot about open access, uh, which is something that we can only do so much of within the community, but on social media, uh, we can really kind of try and advance the conversation about open access and the importance of open knowledge. Um, and then finally, we reach out to librarians and just kind of um, treat librarians on social media a little bit like rock stars and, and just talk about how important the library world is to what we're doing and how important librarians are. Thanks, guys. Um, so I think one of my first questions for you is, you're all experimenting, right? You guys are all sort of trying some new things and have been for a while. I wonder if each of you can tell a story about sort of one thing that you tried that was really successful. Um, you know, something that, that resulted in promoting some active collaborations um, or something like that. And how did you know that it worked? And anybody can start. Yes. Uh, so uh, in the very beginning when we started uh, the Facebook page, we were like confused about what went into it. And uh, we decided that we would post uh, the success stories of some cool women Wikimedians from around the world. Uh, so we would ask them uh, to, uh, we would ask uh, some of them, we would reach out to some of our friends asking them to volunteer to share their story with us. So we would write their story in like uh, two to three sentences. I think we can all post on a social media uh, site like Facebook is going to annoy people, people we wouldn't uh, have the patience to bring that to them. So we would uh, write uh, a very short uh, introduction to them. We would get a, a, cool, a nice picture of them doing some editing or, or doing some uh, collaborative activities related to Wikipedia. Uh, and we would post uh, that as a post on Facebook. And it's like um, uh, such posts get most responses. Well, from what I understand in evaluating um, uh, uh, the uh, administrative panel of the Facebook page, I understand that that kind of posts get most outreach. And I think people really love the idea of celebrating successful uh, women editors. So I thought, so we thought we would like uh, do more of them. And I think uh, it's like a good model to like uh, continue doing. And we also had, uh, we, were, we have once featured uh, a Wikipedian from Cambodia, we once featured a Wikipedian from Indonesia. And actually people were actually unaware that there are people from all these places who are doing such great job. Uh, we also featured Wikipedians from India and from Russia and like many different countries. So, um, uh, so this really helped people understand that we have sort of such a big movement outside of uh, US and Europe, we still have uh, like so many um, uh, cool editors, different editors coming from the global south as well. So it was more of uh, trying to showcase the diversity of uh, the movement and also about promoting uh, the activities in that particular locality or the features of the I remember some of those campaigns and also sort of looking at the admin panel and seeing um, 
you know, when when sort of working women was featured from one country that suddenly we would see some more like more some more like from that country. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So often so happens a lot. And I think we haven't done that for like two months because we have all been very busy, so probably should continue reaching out to more people <coughs> and stuff. Yeah. If there's any wiki women who would like to be featured in yes, the right with us, right with us. Yeah. Um, who else wants to share a story of, of something that you tried that was really, you know, successful and, and then tell us how you knew? Uh, in the past January, uh, in the anniversary of Wikipedia, uh, we planned with the Ibercom guys to uh, may make some uh, gift for Wikipedia and we perform a campaign into Twitter uh, with uh, at least five chapters. And yeah, we post uh, the happy birthday Wikipedia uh, hashtag uh, it's Feliz Cumple Wikipedia in Spanish. And uh, yeah, in Mexico City was a uh, trending topic two hours uh, that the uh, anniversary of Wikipedia. And we have uh, tons of followers. And yeah, we, we coordinated a campaign in, in five countries in Argentina, Chile, Spain, uh, Mexico. I, I don't remember all the country, but uh, yeah, we were so successful because uh, the people, we get the opportunity for sharing with the people, the collaborating, the data about Wikipedia, and what we did by hundreds of people. Cool. Uh, there is one activity on the Chinese social media project is uh, we design and print like a thousand postcards and uh, send to our followers and uh, Wikipedia editors as a souvenir of Wikipedia. It's just like this one. This is a really cheap method. It only cost one dollar for five five postcards, including a shipment in China. Uh, this is something that you know for most Chinese Wikipedia and our readers, it's really hard to get a souvenir from Wikipedia, especially I guess the shipping fee from the Wikimedia shop is uh, fifteen dollars, which means a lot in China. And this kind of things is allow allow our followers and readers and. They can, they, can, they can show it to their family's friends to see that the things that I get from the Wikipedia and the Wikipedia editors or the readers. And especially we have the things in the back, uh, Wikipedia logo, and they say, welcome to follow the, our account. So it's allowed the, our readers to ask us to send the postcard to their, their friends directly to help us to uh, you know, engage more people following the account and knowing the Wikipedia. Mm. Alice, can I, can I ask a clarifying question? I just wondered if you could explain a little bit, what did people need to do that sort of triggered the action of you sending them a postcard? Because I think this is interesting. Sure. Uh, there is a, there are several campaigns. So uh, one, one the thing is, if during the last year, Hong Kong Wikimedia, we post a, we have a post that please retweet this post about introducing to the Hong Kong Wikimedia and we will randomly select like 40 or 50 people get a postcard directly sent from Wikimedia Hong Kong uh, and there is kind of like hundreds or 200 retweets to up that repost and have uh, more than 100,000 views on that post and uh, in the end we like select 50 People, uh, Did you say a hundred thousand views? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a hundred thousand views. So uh, for, uh, for us, like a single post, uh, it's gonna have like around ten thousand views without any review. <coughs> so with, with those, you know, two hundred, three hundred reviews, it's uh, possible for a uh, hundred thousand views. That's also the meaning to have a social media that we cannot rely on the you know press, uh, those news newspapers, websites. We can have our own medias to increase awareness of social media. Yeah, and virality, I think, is something that's really interesting that you guys have been playing with, right? Because it's you have some reach about who you know, but then who you know, who they yeah. know, and so on. And and you know, with your account, those numbers that kind of get that scale. Jake, do you want to talk about success? Yeah, um, it's interesting that one of, so I, I look, you know, with virality, you're talking about uh, views and then retweets or on Twitter, favorites. Um, so there's a, an app called Favestar. You can 
go through all of the tweets that you've ever had and ranked them by the popularity of the retweets and faves. So I did this and I pulled out. And it was interesting to me that the top tweet was not about the Wikipedia library. My top tweet was actually about a, a completely separate project where we built a game to learn how to edit Wikipedia called the Wikipedia Adventure. And that was the top tweet. And I thought it was really interesting um, that what seemed to be the most popular amongst the community of, of librarians and, and Wikipedians who follow the Wiki Library account was this was a very specific entry point to learn about Wikipedia. Um, you know, that there's raising awareness and that's really, really important. But this was a specific tool that would make it easy for people to get involved and, and to kind of go the next step um, to learn about the community and actually participate. Um, and, and that was that was the most popular tweet uh, that we've had. So it was it was a specific thing that kind of brought people in uh, one step closer to actually you know kind of getting involved in our mission. Thanks, guys. Um, so then the flip side of success, right? You're experimenting. You're trying lots of new things. If you're really experimenting, lots of things you try aren't going to work. Um, is anybody willing to tell me a story of a failure? What's something that you tried that really didn't work as planned at all? And then what did you learn from that? I'll start. Um, so we tweet a lot about open access and the importance of, of the ability for knowledge to be shared freely. Um, but our partnerships actually are donations to paywall sources, closed access sources. So um, whenever we have a new partner, we have 14 publishing partners, and we tweet about, oh, now 100 editors have access to JSTOR or whatever it happens to be. Uh, and one of the responses that we got to this was an editor saying, you know, I'm really skeptical, was a, someone on social media saying, I'm really skeptical about these donations because you're promoting paywall of closed access sources. And this, this really doesn't seem to be the way that um, Wikipedia should be going. We should be promoting open access sources, not getting donations to closed access sources. That's not really the point of this. Um, and we ended up kind of getting into a little bit of a dialogue, um, which happens you know, a decent amount, um, which seemed to start out a little bit tense and a little bit like as we were coming from, from different sides. And it, it took us just a little bit of talking to get to the point where we both agreed that Yes, this wasn't perfect. This isn't the ideal solution, um, but it's better than it's better than nothing. But it, it required a, a couple back and forths to get there, and the initial tone was a little bit hostile. Is there anything you would have done differently, sort of coming out of that experience, or like knowing what you know now? I, I think it's just the awareness that even really well-intentioned tweets on social media sometimes attract like a, a bit of a negative backlash, and you just have to be kind of ready to engage with that and, and try and twist those moments into something where you can find common ground. Mm -hmm. Anybody else ever encountered something like this or something else? Yeah, the biggest challenge I think the humans collaborate social media page is facing is that you don't reach out to enough people. Like we have like as of now we have like around we have nine ninety eight likes as of now and it has been like fourteen months. And in the initial two months we saw you like a very rapid rise in uh, the number of likes and the level of engagement. But um, as we go, it's really very hard to reach out of our personal. I mean, uh, during the first few uh, months, we could reach out to uh, people who were personal contacts uh, for us on Facebook and we could tell them that, yeah, we have a project and uh, please, uh, if you are interested, you can follow it and so on. So it's like uh, I'm like depleted of my contacts and now that uh, it's not growing beyond like two circles of contacts probably, um, uh, it's only a few people who are interested in like getting it perpetuated. So uh, we do not have so much of an engagement uh, from uh, outside, from within Wikimedia but outside of the social media uh, team. Uh, so the number of uh, followers hasn't been increasing steadily as of now. We are not decreasing anyway, but uh, it's not uh, going uh, up in a fashion which we wanted it to happen. Uh, and also it's about, uh, though we have translations of most uh, posts which are uh, put on the uh, uh, event page, uh, but we still do have two little people who are, say, speaking languages like Swahili or maybe Russian, for example, and who cannot uh, uh, speak in English. 
So uh, it doesn't make so much sense to uh, have English course written for people who maybe not uh, native speakers of English. Uh, so this is it's a, it's a real problem to reach out to people who are uh, not speaking English and also want to be a part of the collaborator and try to engage with us. So um, that is one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, the challenge of the global camp. We have a question here. I'd like to ask you, uh, well, we are, we are all trying to reach out to people through social media. Yeah. I, I've been in an experience with the Mexicans uh, last with uh, about the size in Mexico, for instance. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know your uh, women history mom thing, but it's quite interesting. So have you shared uh, in order to uh, uh, distribute the other group's information so that I do know that Spanish is not an Indian language, but I would like to contribute to your women in history mom. You're very welcome. I think some Indian would like to contribute to science in Mexico yes. and so on. Yes. Uh, so my idea was that um, in people writing in Indian languages would be more interested in writing about Indian women. So, and also we have like limited resources to get to other languages, but we definitely welcome whoever, whichever language is willing to join the Women's History Month and collaborate with the Indian team. Also, we have a global Women's History Month event running, so it's like any language to join and uh, also uh, write articles and um, we would definitely welcome that, yes. Other questions? One, and then two. Go ahead. Yeah, you said, oh, yeah. Um, I know that in I manage uh, also some Wikimedia accounts uh, on Facebook and Twitter. So um, I know that many people uh, follow us uh, when we uh, upload a picture. So, uh, for example, uh, we, I'm a member of Wikimedia Spain, but Wikimedia Chile increased uh, their followers on Facebook a lot, so about 100%. Uh, Thanks to the uh, wiki concept test uh, with pictures from the country, and but my question is, uh, well, the people want uh, these pictures from Facebook, or something, but uh, I'm the question is, I mean, uh, can we upload these pictures on Facebook or not? Because we haven't the the rights of of the, the picture, so. On Facebook, uh, we can uh, license this picture on Creative Commons. Uh, but so, do, and, uh, should we or must we respect <laughs> this copyright issue or not to get the followers? That's an interesting question. Anybody here have thoughts on it? Not an easy one. I just want to make sure I understand. You're encouraging people to send photos, to tweet photos to you, and you're wondering, or, or post them on Facebook, and you're wondering if you can move those to Commons or assume their CC license? No, I mean, uh, for example, a Wikimedia Sector account uh, used a, a picture of a contest, for example, with your comment. Uh -huh. so, so these photos are already on Commons, and you're yeah, wondering. So when I used to post them, uh, when I used to take <coughs> Commons pictures and put them on Facebook, I used to uh, give a license. Definitely, yes. You have to provide the licensing of the image. And also, if possible, also provide a link to the original image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually, that's sufficient to include the link to the comments file description. So, actually, do you have a comment? Yeah, yeah there, was a, there was a rather long discussion about that on comments, and the problem are the Facebook terms of service. Uh, where you give uh, Facebook a uh, non-exclusive, non-transferable license to use the pictures however they feel free to use them. Uh, and if you're not the creator of the image, then you're actually not authorized to uh, give Facebook this particular license. So strictly speaking, it's not okay to upload uh, CC by SA images by other authors uh, onto comments. So you should so we you should ask the original author uh, if he agrees to uh, we could link the picture. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not sure. Not the yeah. 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 But people people do it anyway and um, I mean you probably have to 
way what the benefits are for the movement. Or, but I mean, you should talk to the uploader, I guess. We have one more question here, and I think that's probably the last we'll take. Yeah, that's certainly useful. Uh, yeah. 
but uh, so he plays for the computer's archives. He was specifically asked to just a monthly charges with the cost of the terms of service. Today, 
Um, you can see this figure quoted here. Um, this is the most recent survey data that we have, uh, which suggests that 16% of the contributors are women. That's terrifying because um, the last time we looked, it was about uh, 9%. So, so it's clearly going up, which is the wrong direction. Bad. So. Real bad, you guys. We really have to fix this. Um, you know, I think I think it's particularly scary because uh, um, it's not like women are fifty percent of the population. They're obviously um, a minority. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, so this is a really high number, I think. Huh? Um, <laughs> so, so when we thought about um, how we were going to deal with this problem, I mean, our first thought was that we should just find all the women and then ban them. Um, <laughs> But then we realized that there, you can't actually do that. There's no policy that lets you lets you do that. So we could either go right that into the policy on English Wikipedia, but that would only solve English Wikipedia because we don't speak German and Spanish and Chinese and Russian. Um, Washington is speak Russian. But um, so so instead, I think our, our preferred solution to reducing the number of women on Wikipedia uh, was to to make them feel alienated, which is to, to take people um, and let them be on Wikipedia and give them the impression that they're allowed to edit and that anyone can edit, but in reality, make them feel isolated and like they're not allowed to participate in Wikipedia as like fully fledged editors. Um, and so I think when we thought about that, we broke it down into like nine steps that we were gonna try, um, and to suggest that you try in your like, everyday interactions with, with editors. That's right, nine easy steps. You yeah. can solve the gender gap by making women go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, list, but, and everybody likes listicles, so it's good. Um, so, number one is make it as difficult as possible to contribute. So, number one contributor to making it difficult to edit is, is actually kind of the foundation. Um, so, we're partly responsible for the like awful state of the software and how, how it works. And that's pretty good. Like, it, it's, it's, it's like a good first step if you want to like reduce the number of women, and when they show up on, on Wikipedia, it looks like it's from 2001 still, and it totally doesn't work, and it's, com and it's complicated. But there's lots of things that the community can do to make it more difficult to contribute. Um, yeah, there are a lot of rules and policies that you can implement, um, a lot of contradictory documentation, a lot of documentation that's out of date. Um, it especially helps to write health documentation in um, more than 5,000 words. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a minimum. Probably like 10,000 is better. Yeah, probably. Go higher. Go yeah, higher. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think that's good. Um, I think there could be more like long, more like long-winded, sarcastic PowerPoints too. That'd be yes. good. Um, so that, that that I think that's a good good first step because um, if it's so difficult that um, you know uh, women show up and they they say I don't have time for this, um, that that makes our job really easy. Um, but the num number two um, thing we should do is, is this. Right, so um, since we already know that most Wikipedians currently today are male, um, it stands to reason that anyone that shows up to edit Wikipedia is also probably male. So you should probably use masculine pronouns when referring to anyone who's new on Wikipedia, um, and in fact, um, be really confused when someone actually outs themselves as a woman. Um, and ask them if, if they're actually sure if you know, they're in the right place, or uh, if, they're, if they're not really looking for Pinterest or Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's good. You know, sometimes you're on Wikipedia and, and you find a new editor and their their work looks really good, um, and you want to leave them a message. Um, usually, it's like a welcome template or something like that. But I I really suggest that you go to their talk page and like leave them a personal message and be like, "What's up, dude? Like, how's it going?" Uh, all that, all, all that kind of thing. Yeah, and then if they respond and they're like, they're like, I'm a woman. The the good thing to do is assume that they're lying and that they're actually like a, a man posing as a woman on the internet. Because uh, that's that's usually more typical. Um, um, so next, sorry, that's good. I'm not good at computers. Um, do you want to? Sure. I mean, uh, another another really typical pattern that we see is um, since most Wikipedians are male, um, it stands to reason that any woman that's actually made it through the process of learning how to do markup and learning the rules was obviously taught by a man, um, and and the reason why she joined was probably to impress the, the man in her life. You know? So, um, so if you do meet a woman with Wikipedia, it's, it's probably good to ask, you know, oh, do, do you have a boyfriend or a husband or maybe your dad taught you how to edit? 
uh, and, and actually, uh, if, if you're a, a male uh, Wikipedian um, and you happen to have a partner, it's always good to introduce her as your partner rather than a Wikipedian. Yeah, especially like at meetups, like if you go to a meetup and you go together, um, it's like it works if it's like, hi, I'm Stephen and I'm a Wikipedian, and Mara says, you know, what? I just edit sometimes. Yeah, exactly, that's perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you if you figure out what what man introduced her to editing, you can find him and you can yell at him. So that's good. Too. Um, and then uh, number four. Um, so obviously, um, normal women don't like to share anything on the internet. They really don't participate on the internet at all, honestly. Um, so the only women who do show up to Wikipedia are ones who have a point of view that they're going to push. Um, they tend to be feminists who want to um, radically destabilize neutrality on our projects. Um, and ruin your fun, because it's, it's really fun to um, have a cool inside club where uh, you can grow it up. Um, so any woman that shows up is really just out there to be a kind of Nazi and, and, and put a damper on a cool clubhouse. Of course, if she's not actually writing about feminist topics, like she's writing about like lipstick or Pokemon or something, um, that makes it really difficult to accuse her of being part of a feminist conspiracy. So, the next easiest step is to just like uh, like assume that whatever she's writing about is not notable. Like um, like pretty much every topic that's important is already on Wikipedia. Um, so if she's not like joining like the military history project, then then <laughs> like, it's like it's like about you know art or museums or fashion or something. You'd be like this is not encyclopedic. You're clearly here to just talk about something that's not notable. This would never be in Britannica. Like, please just stop. And and it helps to not do that directly. Like, don't 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 just come out and, and say that. But just like, you know, one line. Like, nominate for deletion her her articles. Um, like, start start with the ones that are gonna like really get through. Like, speed deletion not notable. And then and then go to like articles for deletion discussion. And, and don't really dig into it. The fact that she's a woman, just attack her her interests and like, ideas. Um, so remember, if you know one woman who edits Wikipedia, there is no gender gap issue or crime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually, if you don't know one woman who edits Wikipedia, now you know me. So next time someone says, is there a gender gap on Wikipedia, you can say no, because Mariana edits Wikipedia, so everything's cool, you guys. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, you can, if you can think of a, a person you know who edits Wikipedia who's a woman, then like, then clearly the things are and they're equal enough, it's fine. They're like women's interests and perspectives are totally represented well. On All it takes is one. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then if, if you if she's there and she doesn't, you know, like she she finds a way to make you know like the Picasso article that she's writing about or whatever or seem notable, then um, when you're discussing things with her, it helps to be like aggressive as possible. Um, like we use phrases on Wikipedia like "Don't be a dick." Um, for a reason, and that's because um, the pe the person who talks the most and is the, the most like hard line in their discussion is the one who's right um, and the one who, who wins the argument. And winning arguments is what Wikipedia is like all about. It's really fun. So we're not we're not here to work together collaboratively on on this idea. We're actually just here to get as many featured articles individually as we can for the feature process. Exactly. That's what we're here. Um, and then, you know, in, in that process, she's probably going to like whine and complain about your bad behaviors, quote unquote. Um, so it helps to remind her or whatever other admin bro comes along uh, that you've personally never really seen people behaving badly on Wikipedia, toward women on Wikipedia, so clearly it doesn't exist. Um, like if you can't find an example in like mountains of talk pages of, of something that you think personally is is demeaning or dismissive, um, then like there's there's not a problem. Um, and if she brings it up, she's just trying to win the argument, so you should dismiss her her objections to your behavior. Yes, much like I've never personally seen the country of India, that means that India does not exist. Exactly. Um, so, and then number nine, and this is my personal favorite, I think, um, is that. You need to make sure that we that, that we, we use mascots and imagery and icons and, and design elements 
that make, make sure women know that they're uh, like objects and, and think observers on Wikipedia and not uh, participants. Um, this is actually, this is my favorite Wikipedia image. Who here who knows what Wikipedia is? Okay, so uh, most of you. Um, <laughs> style mascot it's actually it's, it's a really great thing because um, it's this like uh, really specific part of anime culture where they, they use like a really like cute and familyzed woman to represent like an object or like a thing or a piece of software um, so even though no one who doesn't who's not like into anime subculture would understand why there's like a picture of a woman in a swimsuit or a maid costume like pretending to be the mascot of Wikipedia, you can be like, well, clearly you just don't understand this like really specific thing that uh, nobody knows about, um, and you're just like you're just being a feminist killjoy, and uh, like let us have our fun with this this image. Um, I, I think that's a really good argument for for retaining something that uh, like clearly makes it obvious that, that women are welcome. Um, I don't know how do you how do you feel about it? Um, so, in case you hadn't guessed, we're totally being sarcastic. I know it doesn't translate, um, <laughs> for, like, for people who speak English as a second language all the time, or like if we're using Americanisms or something like that. Um, but I think we wanted to give the talk this way, because if we gave the talk this way, um, where we just told you what we think you should do to change the way you behave, or the way people you know behave, um, people react really defensively to that. Um, and they, they feel like you're just criticizing them personally rather than saying that we want a Wikipedia where everybody feels welcome um, and like on a equal footing as editors. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's important to remember that um, when we talk about the gender gap, we're not trying to exclude or alienate women who are already part of the projects and editing productively. But just because there are some women who edit Wikipedia does not mean that we don't have a problem. Yeah. Um, and then there's two um, addition, like, additional pieces of writing that are way more in depth and the community and, and useful than this talk. Um, one is this new charting diversity report, which is in English and German by Wikimedia Deutschland. It gathers up a lot of the existing research and breaks down the problem in a really good way. Um, and I encourage you all to read it if you're interested in the topic more. And then the second thing is this book called from the 80s called How to Suppress Women's Writing by Joanna Russ. Basically, we like stole all the talk from this book. Um, used. And it, it has a lot of like um, uh, like useful, even though it's about um, the, like the publishing industry and, and writing, um, it has a lot of like, useful analogies um, for like how we relate to women on, on Wikipedia since it's such a like, writing um, driven project. Um, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Hi, I'm from Wikipedia Taiwan, and uh, I think we use a lot of the, the mascot thing. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, for some of the community events. So that's that's a really good re reflect reflection. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, when it comes to like. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, so the, well, that was really a question. It was more of a statement, but um, as a fellow, I, I have a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, because. Uh, well, do, do you know Adventure Time? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a cartoon, I mean, maybe in Cartoon Networks, yeah. uh, which is uh, the, uh, like a warrior, and they produce like a reverse sex uh, uh, episodes. And I'm, I'm wondering, is that a better way to maybe, uh, yeah. every, every time you got a, Cute mascot, a female mascot. You you, you make it a, a, a reverse one, or vice versa. Yeah, you're, you're saying that they like um, it's still like a cartoon with like women characters, but they're like the leads and they have like you know like leading roles and they actually have conversations with each other. Or have to do all that. Okay. All I'm saying that they are also cute male mascots. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, would, would that be okay? Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> we're not. <saying. laughs> Instead, I think it's a little weird to personify Wikipedia like in a in a person. So, if, like if you pick a single person or two people, you're always going to like have these issues of identity where it's like projecting what Wikipedia is supposed to be like or what the culture is like, and that that's inherently going to like maybe exclude a few people. 
Um, so I think probably the easier solution is to like not personify Wikipedia and character at all. That said, um, like and then also like the solution of like it's equal. We also have a cute male thing is still like kind of like sexualizing and fanalizing and kind of weird, like still. Um, if you think about it, there's really no popular websites that have a logo that's anthropomorphic. I mean, they use animals or weird imaginary creatures, but it's pretty rare to see a person being used to represent a website. Yeah, I, I think in like it, it might it's when it comes to like Taiwan, China, Japan, like we could be speaking out of our depth on this topic. Like it could just be that we don't understand the culture from in Asia and that side of things, and like that it's not viewed that way. Um, but we're viewing it as like English Wikipedians who edit from America and that kind of thing. Uh, I, we don't so, want to offend the. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, the, the the alternative that I would suggest is if we're talking about Wikipedians and people just to use photos of real Wikipedians, like take a photo of a meetup with everybody. Um, or maybe we use the monkey selfie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like, he's, That's the new that, that monkey is like the perfect Wikipedian. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's a she. It's a she. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, you see a little bit of a difference there. Um, they're both events. They both have lots and lots and lots of press written about them. Um, but one of them happens to have a shitload of articles about it on Wikipedia, and the other one doesn't. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying that, that women are more likely to be in the Fashion Week. Um, there's lots of dudes who are in Fashion Week. Um, but I think that's that's an example of that, that kind of effect. And I like I'm not going to name names, but I've like personally seen many many cases where someone writes an article about something like that, and like immediately it's nominated for deletion uh, for reasons of notability. Like um, we've done studies of what like the reasons for for deletion are on English Wikipedia at least, and notability is number one reason for speed deletion criteria, which are categorized very very clearly. AFD is a little bit more difficult to do it. Um, so you see that kind of effect. So our suggestion would be to like counter your own systemic bias on Wikipedia when you see those kind of articles and like stop and take a second look and say, like, am I being biased toward this because of the subject? Like I used to do that all the time. Like I would speak to leave articles about not about like gender specific stuff, but about elementary schools. I was like, middle schools and high schools and colleges are totally fine, but I just decided personally that I think elementary schools are not notable, even though like they're really information about them is like really useful and important. Um, and like Maybe I should have stopped and taken a second look at that idea and said, does it really hurt anything? If there's articles about that, can we verify information about them? Do people want them? That kind of thing. Um, I think uh, Dan in the back had to say that for a while. Uh, just for a short comment, you were talking about mascots earlier. You didn't mention anything about Puzzly or uh, or other mascots, the one that the public piece. Yeah. Puzzly, yeah, Puzzly is a, it's, um, like from a de oh, from a clippy. yeah from a design <laughs> from a from like pure design standpoint I'm not a huge fan of Puzzly from a gender relations standpoint like obviously Puzzly is like a completely neutral character if anybody's not familiar with it it was um, in the the new upload wizard on Commons when that was redesigned uh, Guillaume Pommier and, and the people who were working on that decided that they were going to explain how to upload things and how licensing works on Wikipedia in a comic and that they were going to use this like uh, gender neutral stick character with like a puzzle in his head. Called Puzzly to explain the thing, which obviously they put like thought into that to make sure that it was like neutral in a way that didn't like bias for a specific like locality or language or gender or like sexual orientation or anything like that. I agree with you. Probably up the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a it's a good good point. Go ahead. Two point question. The first point is mention a little bit about the age of project and age of Lovelace and how that has been. And for all the men here, think about what new articles you create and think about what I'm trying to do. How can we do a lot more articles about women? Women in science, women in art, whatever. But I suspect if we took all the biographies we have we probably have 95% or more men because they were important way back in history. But we have no excuse to not promote articles about women in any field. And we guys are the ones that have to start doing that with assistance from women. And that's the my thing. But talk about the web. Ada Can you please repeat the question? Uh, the, the question the question was um, can, we, can we talk a little bit about uh, Ada Initiative and what they're doing, um, and then and then there's an Ada project on Wikipedia, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't actually know that very very much about the latter. Um, and the second thing is repeat for me. And the second thing is um, and this is actually true. I think according to Wikidata statistics, that um, English Wikipedia at least has way more biographies of men um, than it does of women, uh, and that's a serious issue that just needs and to be can, corrected. And that we can start correcting for that, like now in the topics that we write about. Um, I think that's a really good point. Like in the last year, there's been a whole series of different editathons to like tackle that specific problem, like women in science editathons, women in art editathons. We participated in some of those, and I think those are really awesome efforts, and we should do more of them. First of all, it's really fun, um, and second of all, like it's a really tangible way of addressing the issue because we show up to like you know in our in our gallery, our museum, to write about um, like biographies of women, and we're correcting the problem in the content, and we're also like introducing women to how to edit, and they feel comfortable. And it's cool. Moist. I wanted to highlight that no women ask any questions. 